Welcome to the procedural Philotexis tutorial by Peerplay. One of the most fascinating subjects to me is visualizing equations and algorithms. In this tutorial I will explain how to use the Philotexis algorithm to create some stunning visuals in your Unity project. So first of all, what is Philotexis? Philotexis is the arrangement of leaves on a plant stem. From the ancient Greek phylon means leaf and taxis means arrangement. Philotexis allows you to create spirals. For example, the image you see here of the cactus, which uses a 137.5 degree calculation to arrange its leaves. Now what we are going to do is plot out all the positions from the center point outwards and use that to make different visual representations of the spiral in Unity. To do this, all we need is Vogel's formula, which is a planner model of Philotexis, to describe the pattern of seeds in a sunflower head. N is the ordering number of a seed counting outward from the center. Phi is the angle multiplied by n, the ordering number in a polar coordinate system. R is the distance between the center and the square root of the seed number and C is a constant scaling parameter. Now you'll notice that the formula is in a polar coordinate system and displayed on the right is a Cartesian coordinate system. So we need to convert our polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates based on a x and a y position. I've placed a white dot in the Cartesian coordinate system to explain how we are going to do our conversion. So in the formula we are given an angle and a radius. With these two values we can figure out the x and y positions of the dot using basic trigonometry. In our code we will declare that the x value is equal to the radius multiplied by the cosinus of the angle. And the same goes for the y axis, but we'll use the sinus of the angle instead. That's all we need to make our system working. Before we start writing out our C-sharp script, I would like to show you some of the possible results of the Philotexis system. In our script, we only need three public variables, which are the degree, the position number and the scale. Now this example will increase n by 1 and place a dot on its corresponding position creating a spiral based on a certain degree. Let's check out 137.5, which is a very special degree. As you can see, the dots are all perfectly aligned to each other, creating the same spiral as we can see in a sunflower head. This degree is the only degree that keeps all dots perfectly aligned to each other. Let's check out 137.3. Now we could change that up to a very low degree, or for example 4 degrees. This is an example at 51 degrees. And lastly, here's an example of 179 degrees. We could also change to a different degree during our cycle. Enough playing around, let's move on to writing out our Philotexis system in Unity. Create a new project. We will visualize the Philotexis system by instantiating a game object. For that we need some prefab, and in this example I will spawn quads of a white dot. You can spawn any object, but if you prefer to follow along you can find a download link in the description that includes a texture of a dot, a material and a prefab of the quad that I will use. Let's create our C-sharp script. Go to scripts, right click, C-sharp script, and we'll call this Philo Texas. We know that we want to instantiate a game object, so let's say public game object, and we'll call this dot. Now the next thing we need is three different variables to adjust our Philo Texas system, and that is the degree, the scale, and the number. And the degree and the scale is going to be a float, so we'll say public float degree and C for scale. 
Now also we need a number and the number is going to be an integer. So let's say a public integer and we'll call this n. Now the extra thing I'm going to add is a public float for the scale of our game object. So let's say a public float is called dot scale. Now the Philotexas formula is returning two values, the x value and the y value. For that we need to create a vector2. So let's say a private vector2. And in this vector2 we are going to do the entire calculation of our Philotexas. So let's call this calculate Philotexas. And our calculation requires three different components. The degree, the scale and the count. So let's say float degree, float scale and it's going to require an integer of the count. Now the first thing we need to declare is the angle, which is the number multiplied by the degree. But there are a few things to keep in mind here. Now we could say here float angle, but if we're making it a float, then we only have a precision of 23 bits. But we want to have more precision, so we can use a double instead, and then later on, uh, when we need to use a float again, we can use the precision of the double and put it into a float again. So let's declare here a double, and this is going to be the count multiplied by degree. Now here comes the second part, we need to convert these degrees into radians, otherwise it won't give the correct result. So we need to multiply this by mathf.degree to rod. And we'll put brackets around these. Now we also need to declare the radius. So we'll say float r is going to be scale multiplied by mathf.square root of count. Now we just need to declare our x and our y values, which is the radius multiplied by the cosinus of the angle and the sinus of the angle. Uh, so we're going to say float x is going to be the radius multiplied by, and instead of using the mathf function, we're going to use the system.math function because that system is into a double system. Now we're going to cast it to a float. So let's say float and we'll type system.math.cosinus and we want the cosinus of the angle. And the same thing for the y value. So let's copy paste this and we are declaring this as a y and it's going to be instead of the cosinus is going to be the sinus. Now we need to return this as a vector2 so let's create a vector2 let's call it vect2 and it's going to be a new vector2 and it's going to contain the x and the y value. Now let's just say return vect2 and we're done. Let's clean this up a little bit. There you go. And that's all there is to the calculation of the Philotaxis. Now in the update function we're going to calculate the Philotaxis uh, for each number. So I'm going to create another private vector2 in which we can assign the position that we get. So let's call this Philotaxis position. And now with these things in place let's go to the update function. Now for this example let's create that when the player holds down the spacebar key it will create new positions. So let's make an if statement if input dot get key key code dot space we're going to assign this vector to to be the new position so let's say calculate Philotaxis and we need here the degree and we need scale so that's going to be C and we also need the number and that's going to be N. Now let's instantiate our game object so let's say game object we'll call this dot instance is going to be game object instantiate 
and what we want to instantiate is the dot uh, prefab. Now we want to set its position, so let's say dot instance dot transform dot position is going to be a new vector three. And what is it going to be? We want to get the Philo Texas position dot x. We also want the position dot y and its C value is going to be zero. Now let's also set the scale dot instance dot transform dot local scale is going to be a new vector three and we'll use here the dot scale. And the last thing we need to do is we need to increase the number. So let's say n is going to be plus plus. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now let's create a new game object and we'll call this Philo Texas. We'll add our script to it. We need to select our prefab. Let's drag and drop that there. The degree, I will put this to 137.5. The scale is going to be 1. I want the dot scale to be 1.5 and let's remove this prefab. Now let's set this background to solid color. Let's test out the scene. Nothing's happening, but once I press the spacebar, look at all these beautiful dots. In the next part we will apply the Philotexa system to a trail renderer and start with some animations. But for now I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found this tutorial useful, hit the thumbs up. If you want to stay updated with new tutorials, subscribe to the channel, and to support me creating these, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon. As a thanks, you get access to all source code and project files.